All right, and welcome back to Photo Tips. Do appreciate you watching and make sure, because I know you're going to like it, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel or follow us because you're going to see a lot of fun stuff coming up. But today I want to talk to you about infrared photography, specifically black and white infrared photography, what it is and how you can make your digital images look like infrared pictures. So let me bring you into my Adobe Camera Raw. It is the same editing engine as Adobe Lightroom, so if you're familiar with the tools in that program, it should be fairly simple similar here. So you can see we have this nice forest scene here, a uh, bit of a fairly high contrast image because you have the top of the tree there lit up by the sun and then down here in the the bottom a little bit uh, a little bit more in the shadows there but what I want to do just even just just to begin to talk about infrared photography is show you what Adobe thinks infrared photography should look like specifically black and white like I said color can be done but it's a little it's a very more of a niche look uh, so we're going to go ahead and here I'm going to go over to my presets tab and I'm going to go over to black and white infrared. So I'm going to click on that preset and this has been programmed by Adobe. I didn't make it myself. And let's take a look and see what happened. As you can see, it really blew out up here the green and almost made it like a white right there. In fact, let's go over to our black and white mixture where we can actually control the darkness and lightness of each individual color here in the black and white image because believe it or not, there is still color in black and white. They're just shown in shades of gray. And what Adobe has done here is they brought up the greens all the way to a hundred, also the yellows, and I guess they've increased the aquas there a little bit. So now it's worth really talking about what infrared black and white film in this case does, because film is where it all started. So basically infrared film, black and white film, just has a little bit more of a, supports a little bit more of the frequency there of the infrared light. So it has a little bit of an extension over what the frequency that a standard sheet of film might be able to support. Uh, and what you do typically is, because if you do not use this filter, it's just going to look like a regular black and white picture, you purchase an infrared filter put it on your lens and that will filter out all light that is not infrared for the most part. It turns your viewfinder virtually black but it will allow the infrared light to pass through and when it hits the, the, uh, the piece of film in that case, let's say you have green trees in the distance, it's going to show that on your film as basically black and the reason for that is because there is very little green light in infrared so it appears as black on a black and white negative. And of course, if you print that negative or if you scan it into your computer, it's gonna be reversed because that's a negative. So we'll reverse it to make it positive and it appears white. So going back to our image here, that is why the tree is appearing white because that's how it would have looked had we shot this on infrared film. Now, just as a side note, you can modify digital cameras to shoot infrared as well. In fact, most digital sensors do have infrared light sensitivity to some extent. Manufacturers actually put a filter over it to block most of the infrared light from coming through. So a lot of people, not a lot of people, some people will modify their camera so they can basically do the same thing as they would have had in the film days. So let's go back to this here. Hopefully that was informative for you. But to me, this is, you know, even though this might be how it would look with an infrared film, I'm going to make a few modifications to this. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and get, hit cancel. I'm just going to get rid of that preset and we'll go back to my bridge and reopen the file here. And I'm going to go ahead, first thing off, I have made a couple adjustments I'll show you there. I've decreased the exposure slightly because it was a little bit blown out here. Again, the camera was trying to do its best with this high contrast scene. But I'm going to go up here to treatment and I'm going to click on black and white like so. And you know, this is okay, but it's not fantastic right there, okay? In fact, there's a couple of things I'm going to do before I try and make this infrared look here. I'm going to go ahead and probably bring up my shadows a little bit there. And, um, you know, I'm going to leave it right there for now. So then I'm going to go up to my black and white mix where we were before, and I'm going to manually do this myself. I'm not going to rely on the preset because I want more, uh, a little bit more control than that. And I'm going to go up to green here, and I'm going to go ahead and pretty much, I'm not going to probably take it all the way to plus 100, but I'm going to get close. Now, I'll alert you up here if I hit my highlight alert over here. As you can see, I, if you look at that red there, that means it has been blown out a little bit. It doesn't bother me too much, but it's a certain thing to be aware of if you're going too far. Now you may recall the yellow 
uh, when we were working with the preset was also pushed all the way up there. Now, I don't like that. Infrared film, I guess that's yellow is close to green, so it also filters it out. You know what, I'm gonna use a little bit of artistic license here and probably not do too much of that. In fact, I'm probably gonna go ahead, I might decrease it a little bit because you notice as we do that, um, you're gonna get those trees darker, it creates a nice contrast as opposed to just being super, super white and blown out, not much detail, so I like that. Now, one thing as well, there is a blue sky behind here, and I've never shot infrared black and white film, but I've definitely looked at some examples of it. A lot of times, bl uh, blue skies get incredibly, incredibly dark when you're shooting infrared. For whatever reason, the Adobe preset does not do that in that case, at least the one that's in my uh, Adobe camera. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and make it quite a bit darker. And you can see there, it does actually create some nice interest up there as we do that. But I want to alert you to one thing. As we do this, you're going to start to get some really weird effects. And this is one limitation of the black and white slider. And also, if you're working in color, this would turn into a color slider. The more you manipulate this, um, the less realistic it gets. So if I keep bringing my blues down here, you know, you see how you have this sharp kind of jaggedy edge around the foliage? That's not natural. Now, from a distance, it might look, well, actually, I was going to say it looks kind of cool. That looks a bit ridiculous. So you got to be careful there as to what you do with those sliders. So I'm not going to do too much here. I'm going to go ahead. I'll, I'll darken the sky, but I'm not going to do so excessively because it's just it's not going to work, as you can probably see right there. So let's go ahead and we'll do back to fit and view. And I'm just trying to think of a couple other things we can do to really make this pop. And not all of this is going to be about infrared. We want to make a decent image here, too. So um, I'm saying that is pretty good. I, I like, well, at least I like what's gone up here with the foliage. I'm pretty pleased there. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick crop as well, because I'm just noticing some of this down here really isn't doing it for me. So I think I'm going to go ahead and crop some of that out. Eh, maybe about right there or so. And then I think as well, I want to make this to be a little bit more contrasty because you see in here it looks a little bit flat. So I'm going to go ahead and grab an adjustment brush which will allow me to edit the area individually as opposed to the entire image. And I think we're going to say, eh, give a little bit of contrast, give a little bit of clarity. Clarity is kind of light contrast, uh, but it actually focuses on the contrast of edges specifically and makes almost the image appear a little bit more sharp, a little bit more dynamic there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and grab my little tool there, and I'm just going to start painting along. And it's a subtle effect that we've added so far, so it's not going to be doing quite as much yet. But I think as you can see, as we start to bring those sliders up, we did clarity, maybe a little bit of contrast there. It really does make quite a bit of difference. So again, I don't want to make this too much attention down here, but I do want to make it pop out just a little bit more. Now, one thing I really love to do, as you guys probably know if you watch my videos, is I like to do a post-crop vignette, which actually darkens the corner of the images and focuses our eye in. I'm inclined to do something similar here, but I don't want to do the entire image because I don't really want to darken down here. I want to leave this reasonably bright as it is right now. So what I'm probably going to do in this case, or I am going to do, is I'm going to grab my gradient filter up here, and I'm going to do a slight exposure reduction. And maybe a quarter of a stop or so. And what the gradient will do, I'm going to do one on each corner here. In fact, I may even darken a little bit more. And basically, it's a gradual implementation of that filter. It's the strongest up here. And as we it gets down to this red mark, of course, I can adjust that as well. Uh, it will uh, fizzle out as we get to that point. So I'm going to say, you know, I might even do half a stop or so. And I'm going to go ahead and do one on this side as well. And let's see if that's too much there. You know what, I'm going to probably not do the same on each side because that is too dark for my taste. We'll back off just a little bit on there on the left side. And, you know, what do you think there? I think we're getting an interesting image here. I, I really like where we're going with this particular one here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I I'm done here in Adobe Camera Raw basically, although, you know what, before I do that, I'm always getting ahead of myself in these videos. I'm going to go ahead and do some housekeeping. I am going to check my, check my focus here and the sharpness. Actually, it's pretty good. We probably need to do much, but I'll go ahead and bring my sharpening up as well, just so we can have a little bit. I'm just trying to see if there's any other artifacting going on, any weird stuff. I think we're pretty good right there, so I'm pleased with that. So I will go ahead and get open image, and Adobe Photoshop is already open. I will go up into canvas size from the image um, tab up there at the top to do a quick border around the image. So I want you to see how it would look. 
So this is our final image here. So we've made it kind of infrared, but we've added our own spin to it here. So obviously like an infrared sheet of film would do with a, an infrared filter, those uh, green trees up there have made it almost pure white, okay? And, uh, but I decided, you know what, the yellows being blown out too, that was too much. So we went and darkened those yellows, which actually was more so in the trees here. And that made those trees get a little bit darker, really get, um, a bit more of a contrast here. And we did fool around here with the bottom, added some clarity to make it pop ever so slightly and darken those corners just there at the top. So I think that is a nice infrared light look. So hopefully you'll appreciate my poetic license there uh, in making a slight modification to how infrared would look. But let's go ahead and save this out because I do want to compare with our color image that we started with here. And we're going to call this one after. This is our final image here. And let's see, JPEG quality is good. Let's go back to our Adobe Bridge. And we started here with this, which, you know, is moderately interesting, but it's a bit washed out with all that color. It was high contrast. You know, we, we probably could have made some edits here to make this better in color, but I thought that the infrared look was better. And boom, there it is. That is the final image. And as you can see, it is much, much better. So uh, that is how you do that. That is how you can do infrared. You know, you can try those presets, but I think as you saw, it's much more gratifying, much more effective to try and mix those colors yourself to get that infrared look. So make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow depending on what platform you're on. Remember, we've got Instagram, we've got Facebook, we've got YouTube, there's a bunch of links down below as well. So check all that out. Tip, appreciate you watching Photo Tips, and you have a good one. Bye-bye.